Hello everybody, this is Karen Smith and I am here talking to you guys about absolute value equations. First, we need to talk about absolute value. Exactly what is it? Okay, so let k, let the variable k be an element of the real numbers. Okay, that means k can be any real number. Then we're going to just consider this statement, the absolute value of k. All right. So we have this um, definition that's a geometric definition of absolute value that really makes it a lot simpler for students to generally understand what the absolute value is. So it says a number's distance from zero on the real number line is its absolute value. So its absolute value basically it's just a distance now note this remember that distances cannot be negative right you always travel a positive number of miles when you drive in your car even though you go back and then forth to and from the store you haven't untraveled any of the miles you have traveled already so um that's just something to keep in mind distance must be positive so let's take a look at this now absolute value of k is equal to 6. I'm asking you what are some possible values for this statement for k. Okay, what are possible values for k? So let's think about this. We just said that a number's distance is its absolute value from 0, excuse me, a number's distance from 0 on the number line is its absolute value. So the absolute value of k is 6. So k is 6 units away from 0. What does this mean? Check it out. This is what this means, okay? Here we are, and if you look at the number line, then we have negative 6, which is 6 units away from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. And we also have the number positive 6. Okay, which is also 6 units away in the positive direction from 0. So, we can't just say k is equal to 6. Okay, Remember, we're ask, when it's asking you what is the absolute value of k or a variable inside the absolute value symbol, remember this, that you have two possibilities here. We can have negative 6 in there or we can have 6. So, a negative 6, or a 6, right? Let me write that larger here. K can equal that. So, those are my possible values for K because, because what? Because the absolute value of negative 6 is equal to 6, and the absolute value of 6 is also equal to 6. Okay? Okay, so let's take a look at solving absolute value equations using this information okay so if you look in in the little thought bubble that I have up there okay an absolute value equation okay absolute value of ax plus b is equal to c similar to this example I have written here right next to it okay all right so this can be rewritten okay as two separate equations okay and similar to what's written in the bubble there okay ax plus b can equal to positive c ax plus b can equal to negative c now when they did this rewrite okay here's my inside of the absolute value right ax plus b i want you guys to notice that the left hand side of the two separate the separated equations these derived equations, we derive them from the problem, right? From absolute value. Notice AX plus B did not change. It's the same on the left side. So basically we take the inside of the absolute value symbol and write it as is twice, okay? So it stays the same, okay? So you don't change inside the absolute value. What sign changes is the right side of that. So if you have your absolute value on the left and your constant on the right, that C changed. 
we have the negative, or let's say the opposite of the value and the original value that it's set equal to. So let's do let's do this example here. Okay, we have the absolute value of x minus two is equal to eight. Okay, so I'm going to follow this formula this that I have written here very closely. And so what we're going to do is separate this out into two separate linear equations. We'll write out the inside of the absolute value, the x minus 2, as is, twice. So we'll essentially we'll have, we'll have x minus 2 is equal to, and that first thing will be, we'll go along with this definition the way it's written. So we'll have the, the 8 as it is, and then, or we'll have x minus 2 as is, right, didn't change, equal to the opposite of the right-hand side, okay? Only the right side changes. And now, thought bubble two, okay? Second part, we're just gonna solve these two equations independently, right? And we're gonna end up with our two solutions. Okay, so the left-hand side one, we're gonna add two to both sides, right? Add two, add two. Okay, these guys cancel, and x then is equal to 10 for the first solution, okay? So we'll add 2 on the other one, all right? These cancel, and x then is equal to negative 6. So 10 and negative 6 would be our two solutions, okay? So um, here we go, and so to verify, how do we check these solutions, okay? To check them, we have to check them both independently, okay? You can't check one or the other. Both of the solutions have to be correct, okay? So um, you just go back in plugins, for example, the 10, okay? So you want to go here. Let me change colors so it can, like, separate it a little bit. Go back to this one, okay? So if we're checking our answer. So, for example, for x equal to 10, I'm going to go to absolute value x minus 2 equal to 8. I want to make sure it's true or false. Okay, this is supposed to be a oh, 0. Absolute value of 10 minus 2 is equal to 8. Okay, absolute value 10 minus 2 is 8. Okay, so you just kind of simplify it down steps, okay? And so 8 is equal to 8. That's true. Okay, should probably leave some room for my uh, equal sign. Okay, so true statement here. Okay, so this one's good. So now we want to check the negative 6, okay? So for x equal to negative 6. All right, so absolute value of negative 6 minus 2 equal to 8. All right, so absolute value of negative 8 equal to 8. True statement, right? Because 8 is equal to 8. Yay, so we got the right answer. If you guys really get into checking your solutions that you get, you basically have a key and you can check your own problems on the test before you submit your work. That's smart. So learn how to check your work, okay? If you're confused about that, please ask me. Let's look at some of these other examples I have up here. Okay, so you want to be sure to get the absolute value part of the equation by itself on one side of the equal sign before you try to separate it out like we just did in that example. Okay, so I just want to uh, look at some examples now with you. Let's go through that and I will remind you of this caution in a minute. But let's take a look at some of the things I have here, okay? And uh, let's see, let me put my spare problems over there. So let's take a look at this first example I have here. The, um, 3x plus absolute value of 3x plus 5 is equal to 14. Okay, let's scooch these over. All right, get that over there. Oh, okay, so if we look at a 3, okay, absolute value of 3x plus 5 is equal to 14. So now we definitely have the absolute value symbols by themselves on one side of the equal sign. This is exactly what they're talking about, okay? In other words, like nothing is on the outside of the absolute values being added or subtracted or multiplied. 
like in part D. You see that they have the 5 and the minus 3 on the outside. We're going to have to get there later, but we'll, that's what I mean. That's different. But in part A, we already have the absolute value signs isolated. So now you see when you have this situation, we can go straight into 3x plus 5 can be the opposite of 14. Or 3x plus 5 can be 14. So notice one of them is the same as the right side. And one of them is the opposite as the right side. But the inside of the absolute value sign didn't change, right? When I set it up, these stay the same, okay? All right, just want to remind you of that. So now we're going to solve these guys independent of one another. Subtract 5. Divide by 3. Both sides. Okay. Okay, now divide by 3. All right, and then you'll have x equal to 3. So we have negative 19 thirds and 3. Okay. So... Let's move on. All right, in part B, we already have the isolated absolute value. So we have what? 2x minus 13 is equal to negative 5, or 2x minus 13 can equal 5. Now we want to solve these independent of one another. Now you can pause your video and try to do this yourself, because in about three seconds after I'm done talking to you, I am going to have a solution up. So I'm going to hurry up and get this done for you for sake of time and so pause and, and solve it see if you get it right okay so your solution should be four or nine four nine four nine okay now earlier we said what I said caution be sure to have the absolute value part isolated on its own side of the equal sign first right before you separate out into your two linear equations so Let's have some caution. Okay, look at C and D. Now, on C, these are sneaky, the ones like C, because it's the, they'll, it'll sneak up on you. Now, C and something added or subtracted off the end, like the next problem, that's easy to spot. You know, you know you got to add or subtract that off. But the ones that are in the front, that they kind of, I don't know, they're easy to lose sight of. So don't forget those. So for part C, we're going to, before we separate it out, we'll divide off both sides by 3. So let's divide 3 both sides. Let's get busy with that. All right, so divide the whole left side by 3. Divide the whole right side by 3. Okay, these will cancel. Now bring down your absolute value. You have not separated them out, so be very careful with that. And so we'll have 5 on the right. And this is all good, okay? So now you can separate it out because we have absolute values. So we'll have 7 minus 3x is equal to negative 5. Or we can have 7 minus 3x is equal to 5. Now on the count of 3, pause your video and solve it yourself and come back for the solution, okay? Ready? 1, 2, 3. So for your solutions, you should have 22 thirds and negative 8 thirds. 22 thirds and negative 8 thirds. And this brings up a good point, you guys. I like to leave my fractions in improper fraction form, but fully reduced. You can't reduce 22 thirds. It's already in its reduced form, right? 3 and 22 have no common factors. Neither do 8 and 3, so that one's good too. I'm not going to put it into a decimal form. I'm not going to put it into mixed number. I like it just like that. Reduced improper fraction form is the way I prefer you to put these answers if you have an improper fraction. Okay, so let's do part D. Now we're going to have to do what? We're going to begin by this, getting rid of the minus 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and instead of subtracting 3, we're going to add 3 to both sides, okay? So let's go for that. Okay, so there we are. We do that. Bring down the rest of that side. 5 times absolute value, 3x minus 6. Close your absolute value. There you go. Is equal to, right, because the 3's just canceled. 12 plus 3 is 15. Now, just like we did in part C, we have that multiplied number in the front, the coefficient on the absolute value. 
We have a 5 this time, so both sides of my equation will get divided by the 5 in order to undo the multiplication that I don't want. So these 5's will cancel. And on the right side, I'm going to wind up with a 3. So absolute value 3x minus 6 equal to 3. Now the absolute value portion is isolated all by itself. It's got its own real estate on this side of the equal sign. And we can start separating it out. So what do we do? We say 3x minus 6 as it is, right? It can be the opposite of 3. Or 3x minus 6 can be 3 as it is. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, pause your video and come back for your solution, okay? 1, 2, 3. All right, so these solutions are a little nicer. We have a 1 and a 3 for our last problem, okay? x can be 1 or x can be 3 for part D. So I certainly hope you guys did get your answers correct. Um, let's uh, keep practicing, you guys. Come see me in the view office. Our midterm is going to be this week so um, I'm gonna put an announcement on that in the general forum in a minute so um, make sure you practice setting these things up make sure you isolate them on their own side of the equal sign first right similar to a and B there they're already isolated you can go into the setup once they're isolated then you can set them up in their two different linear equations right like we said according to that definition up top right here in my little thought bubble okay so um i'll talk to you guys soon have a great day okay so what do we do when there are absolute value symbols on both sides of the equal sign is this a problem that we cannot overcome or is this something we can overcome what do you think well i think we can overcome it here's what we do okay so to solve these equations, and you'll notice in my little definition here, we have some expression with x in it, a variable expression. And on the right, again, another bx, meaning another variable expression, algebraic expression, inside absolute value symbols, just like we have in our example. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to take the ax as it is. Notice ax does not change in this rule, okay? So again, like for example, in our problem, 4x minus 9 is not going to change, okay? So we'll write that one twice without the absolute value, okay? Now the right side, however, you'll notice we're going to have one that's going to be the version it's in, the 2x plus 5 as it is, and then the other equation will be the opposite of. So you're actually going to set up a distribution. Like you're going to put parentheses and put a negative on the front of them parent the parentheses. So here's how this looks, okay? So we'll follow the order the definition does it in, okay? So one's positive and one's negative, okay? So the first one, we'll write it the right side as it is, 2x plus 5, okay? And in the other one, we will do this, watch. Okay, here we go. We will put the negative sign right outside of a set of parentheses. And we'll write the 2x plus 5 in there, okay? But what's happening is going to be the opposite of 2x plus 5 in one more step. Okay, so how do we handle that? Let's go ahead and take the equation on the right side first, okay? So what we're going to do is we've taken the opposite on the right side. We need to get rid of parentheses like normal. We're going to distribute the negative. So what happens then? We take the opposite of each of the terms inside parentheses. So we'll have negative 2x minus 5. And then the left side just kind of gets brought down, okay? So then we're going to move our x's over to the left, right? We can add 2x to both sides like we usually solve. Now you're just doing your regular solving techniques, properties of equality, etc. Okay, that's negative 5. Oops. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to add 9 to both sides, right? What I do to one side, I need to do to the other. We want to keep the scales balanced in these, right? 
So 6x now, 9 minus 5 is 4. And divide by 6 on both sides. You guys should be about ready for me to start, not skipping steps, I mean by mental math is what I'd prefer to call it. But um, I probably, after this first exam, will not write as many steps in our examples. I'm just warning you now. So x here is 4 over 6, or what? Divide by 2 for both numerator and denominator, right? They both have a common factor of a 2. And look, we can write it like this, 2 times 2. Just to practice this, you know, or in 3 times 2. Would you agree that this is 4 over 6, right? Well, now we have 2 over itself. These cancel. This is what reducing is, you guys. Essentially, we when we scratch it out and write the little number, we're really just writing a shorthand version of that. So one of our solutions is 2 thirds. Don't forget the other one, okay? We still have to go back and do the other problem. But we can go right into it. We can add 9 to both sides. And if you want, you can subtract 2x from both sides. Okay, so we'll have what? 2x, these guys cancel, these guys cancel, is equal to 14. Divide by 2 right on both sides okay and you'll have x is equal to 7 so my solution set x is an element of what 2 thirds comma 7 and with set brackets okay okay I'm running out of time so let me hurry up and give you guys this 411 these are possible solution types for your absolute value equations okay check it out all right, so the first one says that if x, excuse me, the absolute value of x is equal to a, and we're going to say such as a would be a positive number, right? Above 0 means it's a positive value, okay? This is the scenario. If it is absolute value set equal to a positive number, okay? And what you can do here is kind of just with a little note. Let's just make a little tiny note. We can put a little tiny plus sign, okay? Absolute value of x is equal to a plus, a positive value, okay? If this is the case, you will have two solutions, okay? So two solutions, like we've seen most of our problems today, okay? If we have absolute value of x is equal to, okay, notice absolute value is by itself, right? And this time is equal to a, a is less than zero, or in other words, a is negative. Okay, if this is the case, ask yourself, can I have a negative outcome from an absolute value? Can you? No, you can't, right? So look shorthand. I'm going to put absolute value x equal to negative. Okay, so this is a no-no. So this is no solution, by the way. No real number solution. And you, you guys, for the sake of our class, you can just write no solution. That's fine. Okay, if we have, finally, x, excuse me, absolute value of x is equal to zero. Remember that zero is neither negative nor positive, okay? So zero is just zero, okay? Middle man, right? So this means what's going to happen is I'm going to have one solution, okay? There's nothing I can say this is the opposite, you know, and this is the, the positive or the actual value. So you'll have a single solution, okay? And I'm going to show you one quickly like that, okay? So um, that would look something like this, okay? Let's do this example here. Egg, oh, and where are we? Example, quick one. Solve absolute value of 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, okay? If this is the case, it's not like we can say it's 3x minus 1 is negative 0. That would be ridiculous because 0 is negative. It's not negative nor is it positive. So this is the setup. So this just becomes 3x 
minus 1 equal to 0 without the absolute value. Add 1 to both sides, simply. Keep it simple, y'all. Keep it simple. That's what you got to do. Now what? Divide by the 3 to get the x isolated. Right, then it cancels here, and I have x is equal to 1 third for my solution. A single solution when you have absolute value equal to 0. Stay tuned. Y'all have a great day, and um, let me know if you need my help. I'll be around. Bye-bye.